Hello everyone, I am Iskwaram and in this video, I am going to demonstrate how you can simulate the creation of a deadlock in this YAWS CPU simulator software, which is a really good tool created by Edge Hill University and allows you to simulate various operations of an OS. Check out their website, Give uh, the link is given in the description. Yeah. So, uh, as you all may know by now, and for those who don't know, a deadlock is there are four conditions necessary to cause a deadlock first is hold and wait no first is mutual exclusion that is when a process allocates a resource for itself it will it can that resource can only be used by the process which has allocated that resource and any other process which wants to access that very resource will require to wait until the first process is done with that request uh, until it can access it. Second condition is the hold and wait condition in which a process say P1 holds a, a resource say R1 and uh, another process say P2 tries to access R1. But the thing is that as I said before in the mutual exclusion part R1 is being accessed by or rather is allocated to P1 so R2 has to wait until R1 releases control of R2. Third condition is the no preemption condition which basically states that a process can not be forced to preempt or rather in simpler words a process cannot be forced to involuntarily give up the resources that are allocated to it which can if it if it is forced to do that then that can cause some really serious problems fourth is the circular weight condition in which a set of processes say p1 p2 p3 all the way up to pn are all holding and requesting resources such that p1 is holding r1 and is requesting for r2 which is being held by p2 which in turn is requesting for R3 which is held by P3 and this goes on and on until Pn which is holding Rn is requesting for R1. So the thing over here is all of the processes are requesting and simultaneously holding resources and because of this no process can go ahead and execute the rest of its code. So all the processes come to a waiting standstill point and this is what's called a deadlock. So that's what we're going to try and simulate in this video in the software. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on this compiler button to open the compiler. Just go ahead and <clears throat> resize it. And we're going to use this code. So basically what this program is going to do is that in the first line, we are allocating a resource, say, for this one, we, it's going to be uh, 0 and 1. I'm going to explain why 0 and 1 in a little bit and uh, we're going to wait for 3 seconds over here the second line means we're going to wait for 3 seconds and then this third line in this third line we're trying to access or rather allocate another resource to this very process and then we're just going to you know run a small for loop in which nothing is happening and then end the program. This program isn't in any way significant or it doesn't do anything significant really. It is just there for the sake of testing. Now, we're gonna need to write four such programs for four different processes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save. And by the way, always make a habit of saving the programs. So I'm just gonna name it say P1 for first process. I'm gonna um, <clears throat> select new again paste that code and now this time I'm gonna set the name to deadlock p2 and I'm going to set this to 1 and 2 so here it was resource 0 and 1 in the sense that it's going to hold resource 0 and try to request or try to allocate resource 1 and P2 will hold resource 1 and try to request for 2. I'm going to go ahead and save this too. The last process should try to access the first resource. So the circular weight condition gets fulfilled. I'm going to go ahead and save this too. 
before.txt. So now we have four different programs. I'm gonna go ahead and compile each one of them. I'm gonna see this compilation happen. I really like this feature of the software by the way it shows exactly how the compilation process is going on, what all steps are happening and here uh, you can see the assembly code for this code of ours. So I'm gonna go ahead and load all of these into memory in sequence. So it gets loaded like this. Deadlock P1 is loaded here, and I'm gonna. You can navigate between the all the windows you open. Uh, the 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 software always provides these buttons for you to navigate between the uh, different windows. So like say I, right now I'm in the compiler window. I want to go back to the CPU window. I'm gonna click on this button. And if I wanted to go into the OS button, I'm gonna click on this. So you don't have to like Alt tab and remember which one of those tabs you were supposed to be on. That's a really good feature that they had, and I liked it. Uh, so yeah. So now that we have all of our four processes over here, I'm gonna go ahead in the OS window. And I'm gonna set the speed to the maximum value. I'm going to select round robin over here without any priority. But this one. And I'm going to create an instance or rather a process each of these. So we have uh, four different senses, four different processes. And uh, just so you can know, you can go to this views tab over here and click on view resources these are the resources so as I, as i told you before i will tell you why we named the resources if i uh, just close this for a minute and go back to the compiler why we use these numbers over here to state what resource we were allocating this is it these are the resources that we have to be allocating and that is basically the syntax you just have to use the numbers that's how it works so uh, green indicates that that resource is available yellow indicates that that resource has been allocated by some uh, re uh, process and red will indicate that it has been allocated as well as requested by another process so we can also see which process uh, is using this resource and which process is requesting it so I, i'm just going to go ahead and uh, yeah, sorry, I shouldn't do that. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the stay on top button, which means this window will stay on the top no matter whatever I do. And this is going to be handy so we can see the resources being allocated and so the, the deadlock occurring basically. And I'm going to go ahead and start. So all resources get allocated. We wait for three seconds. The processes have gone into the waiting queue. And slowly, there we go. A deadlock has occurred. So let's see what's happening here. And see that all of these processes are in waiting state because they are waiting to access resource which is being currently allocated by another process. And hence, the deadlock has occurred. So if we click on show deadlock processes over here, you can see there's a detailed info over here about what process or, or rather what which resource is allocated to what process and which process is trying to request allocation to what resource so this is basically it you can, as you can see you may have seen this diagram in various college textbooks tech max etc p1 is al, p1 has allocated r1 which is being requested by p2 which in turn is holding or has allocated R2 which is being requested by P3 and so on we have this circular weight condition over here so what you can do to release this is that I'm gonna go ahead and press on this release button and what's gonna happen by this is that process with the process ID 4 that is the first process P1 will be forced to release that is it will be forced to preempt its resources and then the process requesting it that is process 7 that is process with the PID 7 P4 
will go ahead and access it and hence that will solve our deadlock so i'm going to click on this again and i'm going to hit release so the deadlock's gone there we go so one by one all of the programs are executing as you can see here the for loop is executing and because of this slowly all of the processes are getting out of the wait queue executing and there we go so how could this happen well basically as you saw in that diagram we had a circular wait condition and a deadlock occurred but when i released r0 then my fourth process p4 could access this one and then it could get terminated which caused the resource it was it had allocated that is that was r3 to become free which was being requested by r2 so r2 could run and uh, it could terminate which called oh, sorry which was being requested by p2 which caused p2 to run and terminate so r2 could get free which was being requested by p1 so p1 ran and it terminated which caused r1 to become free in the end i'm gonna go ahead and do that once again so you can see uh, oh yeah i'm gonna have to create the processes again load them back into the memory and uh, again view resources i'm gonna uh, if w you close the dialog box while that stay on top checkbox is was ticked then it's not gonna work again at times you're gonna have to uncheck and recheck it for it to work so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and start again As you can see, all of the resources are getting allocated sequentially. Then there's a three second wait, and then there we go. And the deadlock has occurred again. The diagram. So when I hit release, then P1 will be forced to release this resource. So P2 can use this resource, and then P2 will run and terminate, and hence R2 will be free, and so on. I'm gonna go ahead and click please over here and as you can see again the processes are running see of the for loop is running in the process there we go Anyway, that's it for this video guys. I hope this video was at least somewhat helpful and educational for you and I really recommend you go ahead and try this out yourself in the software. The UI is a little bit probably cluttered. I mean, I don't want to criticize the creators, but the UI can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but really if you just go ahead and use it yourself uh, after once or twice, you'll just get used to it and it won't be that big of a deal anymore so thanks for watching guys see you in my next video peace out and best of luck for your exams study well signing out